So today's video, we're going to be going over density and graphing. Make sure you how to read a density graph, a graph of an object density, and also we're going to show you how to take the data that we've collected, mass and volume, and put that on a density graph and determine the density of a particular material. Now, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos, step-by-step -step science. You can like, you can share, and you can comment. Thank you very much. I really appreciate all of your support, and let's get started density and graphing. So here we have the data, actually, that we're going to collect, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a data graph, excuse me, a density graph. And I have here the mass and the volume, and for a particular material, I have collected five different masses and five different volumes, five different data points. I would say five different masses and corresponding volumes. So for each sample, we have the mass and the volume. And we're going to put that data right here on this graph. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make and draw the y-axis and the x-axis. We're going to label that. We put the mass on the y-axis, the volume on the x-axis. And then we're going to divide up our axes accordingly. And you can see on the y-axis, I make every five 100 grams. That means every square is 20 grams. And then on the x-axis, I'm going to make it so that every 5 is 10. So that makes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then 100. Now you'll notice that I have each square here is 20 and each square here is 10. That's okay. It doesn't have to be the same on the x and the y-axis, but it has to be consistent throughout the y-axis and consistent throughout the x-axis. Now we can plot our data. And I like to start with the volume. So I look down here, 70 is the volume. And I'm going to go up here to 260, and that should be right about there. The next one, the volume is 60, and the mass is 200. That should be right about there, I think. And then all of the rest of the data, 40 and 120, would be here. And then 15 would be something like that. And then we have 50 for the mass, would be something like that. Now we have one last data point, which brings us back here to 90, up here to 320, and like that. Now you will notice I plotted all those as best as I could. And then you'll notice that they're pretty much fall a nice straight line because it's a proportional relationship for the density. And you can see that I can draw what I would be considered my best fit line. Now, not all the points may line up on the best fit line, but I'm going to draw one line that's like the average of my data. It's going to go through the origin because when I have no mass, I have no volume. That's like another data point, you could almost say. And now we're going to calculate the slope of that line because the slope of that line, which we give the symbol m, is equal to the density. So the slope of a line, m being the symbol for the slope, like y equals mx plus b, the slope is defined as the change in the y, which is the mass, over the change in the x, which is the volume. So we could say the change in the mass divided by the change in the volume. And if you remember that the density equation, the equation for calculating density is the density equals the mass divided by the volume. And that means that the slope of this line, the steepness, the slope of that line is equal to the density. So the greater the slope, the greater the density. Lower slope, lower density. Now we're going to calculate the slope, and this goes right through the origin. It's where the change is always, we can start at zero and go up, and we're going to pick a point somewhere on the line that we're going to use to calculate the density with our equation, density is equal to mass divided by the volume. Okay, so I'm going to pick this point right here. I like to pick a point where it crosses the graph paper so I can see very easily that that volume is 70 milliliters, and that mass is 240 grams, and then I get 240 divided by 70, and I take 240 divided by 70, and I find out that the slope of that line, which is the change in the y over the change in the x, or the density of that material is 3,43 grams per milliliter. And I'm going to put that right there to remind me that that is the density calculated, the slope of that line at that point. Now, I'm just going to check it with another point. Uh, I think it's good just to check it and to see what we get with this different point. So the second point that I'm going to choose is going to be right here. Now, this mass is uh, 80, and the volume, now, it's not right on. I chose this point intentionally because it's not right on here. It looks like it's 10, 20, more than 20, less than 30. It looks like it's less than 25, and I decided that that was 80 and 23, and that would mean that the mass is 80 
the volume is 23 and you see that I get 3 comma 4 7 now that's not exactly the same density as 3 comma 4 3 but it's pretty close probably has something to do with the fact that I couldn't read this this might be 22 it might be 23 it might be 24 something like that but you can see that that line is a straight line a straight line has one slope and that means that that density all the way along there is somewhere right around there at 3 comma 4 3 3 comma 4 7 or maybe right in between okay so that's how we can plot that data draw the best fit line and then calculate the density now it could also be the case that you're given a line on a graph without the data points and you're asked to calculate the density that is represented by that line or the density that's represented by that mass and volume data because we have an infinite number of points and each point has a corresponding mass and a corresponding volume and we can use those points to calculate the density. So let's choose a point. Okay, I'm going to choose that point this time. It's always good to kind of choose one that's on the graph paper there on the, where, the, where the grid crosses, although you can use any point along the whole line and you'll get the same value more or less. You can see here we have 50 and then we have 110 it looks like. And I'm going to take my equation for the density, mass divided by volume, 50 divided by 120. And you can see in this case the density is 0 0.42 grams per milliliter. All right. So that is how you can calculate that right from that point. Now, we can also find out just for an individual data, for example, if the volume was 200 milliliters, okay, what would the mass be? Now, you can see I can go over here to 200, and I can go up here to uh, the, and I want to know what the mass is, and the mass, this is uh, 50, 60, 70, 80, and it looks like it's less than 85, maybe, maybe 83, so I'm going to read that as 83 grams. Now you can check that, the mass divided by the volume, you get the, approximately this same density. We can also go the other way. If I was to give you the mass, and let's say the mass is 40, you want to know what volume would have 40 grams? Okay, what volume would have a mass of 40 grams? We start now here at the grams, 40, and we read over, and we come down here, and we see that that would be somewhere, it looks like it would be more than 95, but less than 100, so I chose 97 like that. Okay, so we can first calculate the density, and then we can interpolate that data on our graph and find out the corresponding values for the volume and the mass, or the mass and the volume. If we're given one, we can find the other by reading it right off the graph, we're not really calculating it using that, but we can also do that because you can see here, what if I want to know what is the mass of 672 milliliters of this material? Well, you can see, I want to know the mass, I'm given 672 milliliters. Well, 672 is not on the graph. So I can't read it off the graph, I have to extrapolate outside the graph. Well, I'm going to be looking for here the mass, so I'm going to use my equation for the density equation. I'm going to uh, rearrange for the mass. I find that the mass is equal to the density times the volume. Now, I'm given the volume, but now I don't have the mass, the, the density here, but of course I already calculated the density. So I'm going to use this density right here. So I know the mass is equal to 0 0.42 grams per milliliter times the volume that I've given, and that means the mass of 672 milliliters of a material that has this density would be 200 and 82 grams. Okay, I knew the density. I was asked to find the mass from a given volume. All right, now we can go the other way around, of course, also. Let's say we want to know what is the volume of 438 grams. Well, 438 isn't on here. All right, it's not on my, it's, not, it's outside my graph. Now, I could make a bigger graph, but that would be too much work. And now I want to know the volume. I'm given the mass, it's the same material, so I'm going to use the same density, and that means the volume is 438 grams divided by 0 0.42 grams per milliliter, which is the density, and then I would find out that the mass of this material, excuse me, the volume of this many grams of the material that has this density, the volume would be 1,043 milliliters. Okay, so there you go. That is how you can make a density graph, and then you can draw the best fit line, 
and calculate the density and read those values off the graph. And then you can also be given a line on a graph, get the density, and then also calculate the values outside the graph. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can, let's see, what else could you do? You give me a thumbs up for this video. You can leave me a nice positive comment. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all your friends, children, just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.